It is a massive game at the weekend, isn't it? It is gigantic. Arsenal against Chelsea at half past four. Uh, I don't know where we begin. Let's talk about Arsenal spending, right? Lots, lots has been made about the amount of money that Arsenal spent and the players that have come in. What do you make of it? They're spending, they've spent 30 on Odegaard. Ben White cost them 50. Um, the goalkeeper they've bought, uh, Ramsdale, cost them 23. Got three, yeah, yeah. 30. Yeah, did, did, mean, in, in a spent, kind of funny sorry, way. spent another 12, 22 million on two other players as well. So you're looking over 100 million pounds. Yeah, I mean, listen, on paper it's not great, but I mean, I've heard some people say they've made signings and it's made them weaker. Well, it hasn't because I think Ben White's better than what we've got. Right. Um, I think Odegaard, you, you need good footballers in the squad. Um, and he is a good footballer, so I can understand why they've done that. I mean, Lukonga's 21. But are the players coming in going to take them into the top six, well, into you, the top you, four? You, That's you, where they need to go. Well, obviously, them players are a premium. To, to buy a player straight away and get them into the top four, it just doesn't happen overnight. You need to spend big money. Right. But you look at... Arsenal but they're spending get, £23 million pound on a goalkeeper, right? Yeah, but that's but £23 million on a goalkeeper, I understand that, but it's still not... Obviously, big, big money in terms but of... is he better than Leno? Is he £23 million pound raising to 30 better than Leno? Well, I've never been... But, I've never been Leno's big fan. I, would I was, that, would I was that money, Martinez. Would that money be... Yeah, I know, of course, but would that money have been better spent on the pitch rather than in the goal when you've got a goalkeeper that's OK? Yeah, but... <laughs> what I say about Rams, though, and fair, the rest of the signings, is they're young. So I can kind of see what he's trying to do in terms okay. of Ben White's 23, Odegaard's 22, Lukonga's 21, Tavares is 21, and Ramsdale, if he comes in, is 23. So I get what he's doing. He's, he is building for the future. But it's going to take a while for these players to gel. And then you add Smith Rowe into that, Saka, um, Martinelli, do you know what I mean? Tierney. Smith Rowe. Do you know what I mean? That you have got, the, the youngster of a good team is there. But of course it's going to take a while for these players to gel. So whilst you look at, they have spent a lot of money and they have. The most, it's the, top the of the most, table. Yeah, top of the table in this window. In a crazy kind of way, I can understand what he's trying to do in terms of the age. Do, do you and trust forward. Arteta? <sighs> Alpha, Ar Ar Arsenal's aim, okay. Arsenal's aim this season. Is what minimum requirement this season for Arsenal Football Club? Well, you'd say you'd say they have to get back into the top six. Okay, I'd agree with you. That's exactly what I was thinking. Hand on heart, is Arteta the man to do that? At the minute, the, the signs which is just no. But do you know what I mean when he first came in and he, he he showed us signs that he could do it? But I think what, what I think what's going against him at the minute, and listen, I don't know Mikel Arteta, so I can't really say. But from an outside perspective, I think maybe there's a little bit of arrogance there in terms of the way he can maybe conduct himself around the place. Mm -hmm. But also as well, you look at the, the way that he is with the players. Now, you look at Aubameyang, clearly there's an issue there. I think Lacazette are now talking about potentially he might be one of the ones suffering from COVID. So, okay, that that's what, something we're going to have to live with, unfortunately. Yeah. But there just seems to be a bit of a disconnect between the player and the manager. Now, on the flip side, you look at someone like Manchester United. Now, listen, I'm not Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's biggest fan. Yet to deliver anything at United, and he's been there four years. But what you have to say about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is every single one of them United players are pulling in the same direction. They love him. They love him. They're pulling in the same direction. So that always that will always give him a chance. So even tactically, he's not great because they're playing for him. It's the it, difference. It, he might he might get he might win something along the line. But if the players are pulling in a completely different direction than than Arteta is, or certainly the more senior ones, mm. the bigger voices in the dressing room, that's not going to help Arsenal Football Club at all. Let's talk about Chelsea. Now, wow. of course, yeah, wow. Um, a lot of people are saying, I, I was watching Match of the Day the weekend, I think both pundits, Ian Wright and Alan Shearer, both picked them to, I think I'm right in saying both picked Chelsea to win the Premier League. Yeah, I can understand that. They've, they've now improved their um, their strike force with Romelu Lukaku, got the number nine shirt. He'll be playing in this game as well. How dangerous are Chelsea at the moment? Yeah, they're dangerous. Do they, do they have a weakness? The weakness they had was the centre forward and they addressed it. That that was that was the one weakness. You might you might talk about defensively, but Thomas Tuchel has been so shrewd since he's gone in there in terms Hasn't of he? turning him into a three. And again, you'd have to say Alonso looked like he was surplus to requirements under Frank Lampard. Rudiger never played a game. Christian looked like he was on his way out, and he's turned them three all into world beaters. Of course, there's still question marks around Alonso's defending, but going forward, I mean, his free kick the other day was absolutely sensational. So you'd have to say the only weakness that they had at one stage was centre forward Timo Werner. His movement is brilliant, but. But it was the, the last little piece, the, the, the mm. finisher to finish. And the, if he'd have finished uh, more than the chances, they would have been closer to certainly the top two. But now they've got a proven goal scorer at world level. Yeah, I think Chelsea the real How highly do you rate Lukaku? Very. I put him in one of the best in the world. One of the best number nines in the yeah. world. Easily. How can he not be? His record over the last few seasons has been he insane. Looks, he looks trim now, doesn't he, as well? He's yeah. lost a lot of weight since he was at United. He has done, but you've you got to remember, his first season for United, he was still very good. Yeah, no, he was very good. It was just that. But yeah, here you go. You know what I was talking about? Salah going, mm, 
right? Don't tell me like that with Lukaku. No, when he was at United, that's how a lot of United fans, even though he scored the goals, that's how a lot of United fans felt about him. Yeah, well, you know what it is? Sometimes things just don't fit. The way maybe Manchester United played didn't suit him. Um, second season, of course, he struggled. He still scored a fair few goals, but he weren't the same. And, and second season, he was asked to play out wide an awful lot and Rashford down the middle, if you can remember. And he, he doesn't play out wide, Lukaku. I don't think he played out wide for United a lot. He did. Play out, not maybe a lot, but he, I know at mm. times he was he was asked to play wide. But, but his, his strength now, his speed, his pace as well. That was, that, that's always one, one on one with the defender. That's I always mean, been there. That, you, is, that was always been there. The argument against him was his hold up play, which he seems to have improved in Italy under Conte. He's yeah. been brilliant. But now you talk about, as I said, the most one of the most rounded, complete centre forwards in the world. Mm, okay, how do you see that game going then? Your mob, oh, well, Arsenal against Chelsea. Are you really going to ask that question? Well, you turned them over last season, didn't you? We, beat, we didn't lose to them. We beat them twice. We yeah. beat one 0 at Stamford Bridge, and we beat them three one. And that was towards the end of the season as well. Yeah. One of them. Yeah. And three one. I don't t- see. I was talking to Cundy about this on the Sports Bar Monday night, and he was like, "Yeah, but it's Arsenal." Win. And I was like, "Do you know what? I, I know what you're saying. It's our, but it's it's not now. It's it's mm. it's big boys against little boys, isn't it? Not literally. I don't know what to say. Don't I think I think you'll get hammered. Okay, well, I'll let you give the prediction. Three, three nil, three one, Chelsea. Okay, how do you see it going? Yeah, what do you think? You just do your prediction. No, but I'm asking yours. I've given mine. What I'm going to say think? Chelsea, Arsenal, draw. <laughs> you can't. Eat. I can't give a draw. Come on, come on. What yeah, do you think will happen? You two, don't two. think though. No, as two, an two. expert, that's not what you think. You don't think it'll be two two. two, two. You're laughing. Two two. Do, is that what you think? Yeah, that's what I think. Uh, two two. Get Ray Parler back. <laughs> uh, that was the latest Premier League action with now and now sports membership is the only way to watch the Premier League on Sky without a contract. Stream over 120 unmissable live games this season. Search now sports. Premier League preview on Talk Sport with a Now Sports membership. The only way to watch the Premier League live on Sky Sports without a contract. Search Now Sports. 18 plus, stream via internet, terms apply.